So, just have your strap ready to go. Um, you can unravel it. Mine's always raveled up, so you can unravel it and just place it aside. And we're going to start in a seated position. So, I'm going to take hero's pose. You guys can take hero's pose seated on a block, or you can sit cross-legged if that's more comfortable for you. Um, just And if you're sitting cross-legged and that's not even comfortable for you, stack up a couple of blocks or a blanket and sit up on that. If you're taking hero's pose, remember the block goes between your inner ankles. You can place it on the, the low setting or the medium setting. You drop your sitting bones back down onto the block. You make sure that your inner thighs are equally lined up out in front of you. Yeah? And then go ahead and close your eyes. Rest your hands on your, either if you're sitting with your legs crossed on your inner knees, or if you are in hero's pose, just rest your hands on the top of your quadriceps. And whatever position you're sitting in, start to really root down into your sitting bones. So we're really establishing our foundation here. And so as we start to move into this practice, we start to direct our awareness to different parts of our physical structure so that we get more adept at seeing the big picture in life, right? So oftentimes we get very dialed in or focused on certain concerns. But if we open up our awareness and we think about how much is happening outside of ourselves, comets are flying through the atmosphere right now, through, not our atmosphere, but through outer space right now. Um, there's a whole community living underneath the bottom of the ocean right now. There's the miracle of the planets that are revolving around this one star, and there's the miracle of the entire universe. So we just like kind of open up our awareness and try to see the big picture. And as things are very tumultuous right now and turbulent, someone said to me yesterday, I just want to take a break. I just want a break. And the thing is, we can't take a break from what's going on in the world. We can't really, truly take a break. I mean, we can use this hour that we're on our mat to take a break if we want to. That's an option. But what I invite you to do today is to use this hour to, um, to enliven or to, um, or to um, create a space for insight, to create a space for positive action to emerge from how you're feeling. So it's not about escaping how we feel when we don't feel good. It's about moving and breathing through those feelings, understanding them and understanding what their call to action is. So if you're feeling a lot of anger, that's a good sign that, that, that there's something, there's an action that we want to take. If we're feeling a lot of grief, that's a sign that we have to take care of ourselves and see our way through to the other side. So as you root down into your sitting bones, you lift up through your spine. Imagine that the top of your skull has become like the top of a funnel and you're inviting the breath to move from the top of your skull all the way down into the base of your pelvis as you inhale. And as you exhale, imagine you were sending that exhale breath down through the earth, through your sitting bones, through whatever is touching the floor, whether it's your legs. Take another inhale breath, breathing in from the top. And as you exhale, direct that energy down and out through the triangular base of your pelvis. And so this is called a pana vayu. It's a particular breath rhythm where we're moving the energy down, down and out. We're bringing the energy in through our crown and we're moving the energy down and out. And with this particular breath rhythm, this allows us to ground a little bit more, to not escape to be here, to be present, and to walk through and move through whatever emotions come up for us so that we don't store them in our body. We have our yoga practice so that we can move these things through our body. So take your next few rounds of apana vayu breath, breathing in through the crown of your head and breathing out through the base of your pelvis. Take one more round. Feel those roots as if you could send those roots all the way down into the core of the earth. And then open your eyes and inhale your arms all the way up to the sky. Hook your right thumb on top of your left thumb. As you hook your thumbs together, 
um, swivel your shoulder blades to the sides of your body, suction your front ribs back in, and lift your back ribs up off of your kidneys. As you inhale, get a little bit longer, extend that energy out through your fingertips, but make sure your inner upper shoulders are relaxed. And then as you exhale, slowly start to revolve towards the right hand side. So you're getting even longer as you revolve. Inhale, see if you can lift up a little bit more, but soften your shoulders. And as you exhale, see if you can turn your left kidney towards the front of your body a little bit more, bringing your right oblique towards the back of the room. Take one more round of breath. And then inhale back to the center. And as you exhale, just release your arms to shoulder height. Good. And then wrap your right arm over your left arm. Give yourself a hug. And walk your fingertips to the center of your back any amount as if you could pull your shoulder blades apart from one another. Drop your chin into your chest and just create a sense of spaciousness through the back of your heart. Take a few breaths. See if you can explore that breath into the back of your lungs. Good. And then just release your arms back down. Inhale, take your arms all the way up again. This time hook your left thumb on top of your right thumb and the same thing. Allow your shoulder blades to move towards the sides of your body to encapsulate your torso. And as you inhale, get longer and taller, softening through your inner and upper shoulders, but softening your front ribs. And as you exhale, slowly start to revolve towards the left. And as you revolve towards the left, you're thinking of getting taller. You're thinking of your fingertips brushing the ceiling. On your next inhale breath, Return to the center, and as you exhale, release your arms to shoulder height. Good. Now from here, we're going to think about like making a little wave action with the shoulder blades. So retract your shoulder blades and feel how your chest moves forward. And then protract your shoulder blades and feel how your chest, chest suctions backwards. And just do that a couple of times. We're going to do this a few times throughout the practice. Retraction, protraction. And then the next time your arms are open again, as you exhale, hug your left arm over your right arm, walk your fingertips to the center of your back. Imagine you could pull your shoulder blades apart from another like you were pulling two um, sliding glass doors apart. Drop your chin towards your chest. Good, and then on your next inhale breath, Release your arms down and find your strap. So you're going to take your strap into your right hand. We're going to take both arms straight up to the sky. So the same thing, as you lift both arms, you feel the shoulder blades moving to the sides of the body. You draw those front ribs in. Hold on to that, okay? Bend your right hand as if you were going to pat yourself on the back. Take your left arm out to the left. Turn your palm to face behind you. And then very gently, don't go for like reaching way up the strap. Just find the strap, yeah? Once you find the strap, press your back ribs back into the back of your left hand. Open up through your left collarbone. Point your right elbow straight up towards the ceiling. And with each and every breath, think about letting the sides of your waist grow a little bit longer as you explore the sense of opening up all the different parts of your shoulder girdle. And there's like five different joints in your shoulder girdle. Slowly release. Just take a couple of little shoulder rolls. And then the other way as well. Good. And then take the strap into your left hand. Take both arms up to the ceiling again. Really stretch. Feel the shoulder blades encapsulating the sides of the body. And then just bring your left hand to the space between your shoulder blades or the nape of your neck. Take your right arm out to the right, palm facing behind you. Wrap your hand around behind your back, and as soon as you find the strap, press your back ribs back into the back of your right hand. And then explore the length of your spine. So can you examine that channel of energy from the earth, from the base of your pelvis, all the way through the crown of your head. Point your left elbow straight up towards the ceiling. And then come back to that idea of a panavayu, so receiving the breath in through the crown of your head and feeling your roots shooting down. The more you root down, the more you're able to find that length and that extension. Good. And so slowly release. 
Move your strap aside, probably towards the front of your yoga mat. And then if you've been in hero's pose for a while, you can just take the block out from under you, come to all fours and just kind of bang out your feet. And if you've been on all on a cross-legged position, just do whatever feels comfortable to transition your way into all fours. Good, so as you come to all fours, we're gonna do this a little bit differently this time. Start to move your knees backwards. Keep your shoulders stacked directly over your wrists, but move your knees backwards so you're in a modified push-up position. Press down into the tops of your feet. So try to elongate through the tops of your feet. Suction your belly muscles in towards your spine. Try to elongate your sternum and your tailbone at the same time. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, drop your hips back to your heels. Inhale, shift forward, modified push-up position. Let your abdominals really catch you here. As you exhale, drop your hips back. So it's a really active stretch. Let's do this three more times. Inhale, shift all the way forward and really feel your abdominals make that catch. As you exhale, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Reach through your fingertips as your hips reach back behind you. Take it two more times, synchronizing to the tempo of your breath this morning. Good, and then shift it forward again. And step your knees in now so that you're in tabletop position. Good, and in tabletop position, inhale your right arm up towards the ceiling, opening up across your chest. And as you exhale, dive your right hand underneath your left. So we do this a couple of times, press into your left palm, inhale, spin your right arm up towards the ceiling. Exhale, dive underneath. One more time, inhale, Stretch it open. And this time as you exhale, uh, dive underneath, but land. And if you need a block, if the floor is really far away and this puts a lot of pressure on your face or on your neck, you can rest that block underneath your cheek. All right, so if possible, take your left arm around behind your back, place your hand towards the crease of your right hip, roll your left shoulder open a little bit more. And imagine you could reach your right arm out a little bit further in front of you. Take a few breaths, notice the sensations that you feel. All of the sensations that you feel are like little keys that we can unlock to move energy flow through the channels of our body. So bring your left hand back down next to your face. As you inhale, spin your right arm back up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, place your right hand back down on the mat. Same thing on the second side. Inhale the left arm up to the sky. Ooh, second side, as you exhale, dive your left arm underneath your right. So just explore the movement and your breath for three rounds. Inhale, spiraling it open, spiraling around the axis of your spine. Exhaling, diving underneath. And one more time, inhale, spin it open. Good, and as you exhale, Dive underneath and land, and if you want that block, place that block under your left cheekbone. Take your right arm, circle it around, place it towards the crease of your left hip. If that's not possible, you can just stretch that right arm forward as well, fingertips out in front of you. If you want to have your arm behind you, try to roll that right shoulder open a little bit more as you reach a little bit more through your left fingertips. Good, and then unravel your right arm, place your right hand down next to your face as you inhale, spin the left arm back up to the sky. Gorgeous, and as you exhale, release your hand down. And if you had your block in the center of your mat, just move it out of the way. Step your hands about two inches forward, angle your index fingers towards the front corners of your yoga mat. Tuck your toes under, take an inhale, and as you exhale, super slow motion, lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. So just notice the unfold movement of the posture as it shows up for you today and then you can start to really check in so starting with your foundation really activating the proprioception underneath the palm of your hand so can you make a distinction of how much pressure you're pushing down into the space between your thumb and your first finger versus the amount of pressure that you're putting down into the knuckles of your fingers can you relax your neck so that, your, so that your ears are in line with your biceps? 
Can you firm your forearms in so that it feels as if you could almost lift up a little bit through the heels of your hands? Spinning the eyes of your biceps up towards the ceiling, elongate through the sides of the body, spin your inner thighs towards the back wall. As you inhale, shift forward to the top of the push-up, stack your shoulders above your wrists. As you exhale, lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Just like in the beginning, five rounds, inhale, shift it forward, cultivating awareness. As you exhale, use all of the muscles in your entire body, all of your awareness, to move your hips up and back into downward facing dog. And do that three more times on your own, any tempo that you see fit for this morning. And the seeing fit doesn't come from your intellect, it comes from the intelligence of your breath. Right, so the next time your hips are up and back into downward facing dog, Imagine that your hips just keep stretching back towards the wall behind you. Good, and then shift forward again, stack the shoulders above the wrists, lower down onto your forearms, interlace your hands together, and then start to walk your toes in towards your forearms for dolphins. So you guys can tell we're gonna get into the shoulders today. Press your forearms down, release the crown of your head down, Think about spinning your triceps backwards so you create that almost like container where the back of the armpits are. Good, separate your feet so that there's a foot distance between them. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, drop to the outer edge of your right foot, the inner edge of your left foot, but try to keep the pressure on your forearms even. Good, and then roll over the tops of your feet, drop to the outer edge of your left foot, the inner edge of your right foot. And again, see if you collapse into that left forearm, press equally into your right forearm. Good, and then bring it back up. Walk your toes backwards again so that you're in a forearm plank. And take a moment here to really establish the center of your body, the strength. Imagine as you press your forearms down, you could lift the sides of the waist a little bit higher. You could lengthen the tailbone. You could lift through the inner thighs. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, melt your legs down into the mat. Sphinx pose. So as you come into Sphinx pose, press the tops of your feet down. Press your pelvis down. Press your pubic bone down. And see if you can press your shoulder blades more towards the front of your body. So your shoulder blades are scooping your chest forward. Good, take one more inhale. And as you exhale, release it down. Good, do you have a strap if you need it? We're gonna take the hands behind the back. So if, if interlacing your hands is problematic, just use your strap. You can fold your strap in the center. Um, if your hands are interlaced, pin your inner elbows together. If you're folding your strap, just start to move your knuckles back and revolve your biceps open. Press your pubic bone down. And then lift your chest without lifting your chin. So look at the space just in front of your yoga mat. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, release it down. Turn your face to one side and just let your body rest for a second. And then let's reapproach it. So if you had the interlace of your hands, just switch which thumb was on top. If you have your strap, it's still there. Start to elongate your arms behind you, broaden through your collarbones, lift your heart but not your chin. And then see if you can reach your chest forward a little bit more as you anchor down through the front of your pelvis. Go ahead, take one more inhale. And as you exhale, Release it down, and if you have your strap, just place it aside again. Place your hands next to the sides of your body, right underneath your elbows, tuck your toes under, and transition either through plank or through modified plank back into downward facing dog. Beautiful. Inhale your right leg straight back behind you. Keep pinning that left hip in as the right inner thigh ascends towards the ceiling. Good, and as you exhale, slowly shift forward, curl your knee in towards your chest. 
and step your foot between your hands. Drop your back knee down to the floor, pad the yoga, pad your back knee if you need to. And then as you inhale, take your arms out towards the sides. And as you exhale, let your pelvis sink down a little bit more, a little bit more forward. Good. So if you need your strap, you have a strap. Inch, otherwise, interlace your hands behind your back. Pin your inner elbows in towards one another. And as you inhale, start to send your chest up towards the ceiling. Notice what's happening in your front ribs. Imagine you could corset your front ribs in, but lift up a little bit more through the center of your sternum. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, release. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up to the sky. Hook your right thumb on top of your left thumb. Let your shoulder blades encapsulate through the sides of your body. Elongate, lift the rib cage up off of the pelvis. Good, and as you exhale, release your thumbs. Bring your hands down either to the floor or to blocks. Tuck your back toes under and straighten your front leg all the way, coming into an early pyramid pose here. So notice what your legs are doing. Imagine your inner thighs could hug the midline. Take a few rounds of breath. And then re-bend your right knee. Stack your knee right on top of your ankle. Take your right arm out to the right and slowly revolve your spine, letting your arm just go for the ride as you twist the left side of your belly button to try to look at your right inner thigh. Really use your shoulder blades here. Use the extension of your spine to open up your heart a little bit more. Go ahead, take one more inhale here. And as you exhale, bring your right hand back down. Step your right foot back to meet your left. Nice and strong in this plank pose. So elongate through the inseams of your arms. Imagine the pillars of your arms could grow taller. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, take your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Inhale your left leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, slowly shift forward, curl your knee in towards your chest. Dome shifting through your upper back. Step your foot between your hands. Drop your back knee down to the floor. Uncurl your back toes. Take your arms out to the side. Let your pelvis drop forward a little bit more. And then either with your strap or take your hands behind your back, interlace your opposite thumb on top. Pin your inner elbows together and start to reach your knuckles down. Notice if your front ribs are getting puffy, firm those front ribs in. And see if you can lift up a little bit more through the center of your sternum. Draw your shoulder blades together. Use them to lift your chest. And on your next inhale breath, circle your arms all the way up to the sky. Hook your left thumb on top of your right. And as you lift up, feel like you could, your pelvis stays low and forward, but your rib cage is trying to lift up. Relaxing through your inner and upper shoulders. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, bring your fingertips down. Tuck your back toes under. And straighten both legs slowly. Pressing into the mound of your left big toe, but also hugging your outer left shin in. Noticing your breath. Great. Rebend your left knee. Stack your knee on top of your ankle. Left arm out to the left, and slowly start to revolve it open, coming into that twist. Pressing back through the inseam of your right leg, and using your shoulder blades to open up your chest. So press your shoulder blades into the front of your body. Good. Slowly spiral your left arm back down. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Pause in the plank pose, nice and strong. Shift your shoulders forward on your inhale. And as you exhale, super slow motion, lower your belly all the way down to the floor. Imagine there was a beach ball underneath your belly and you were trying to draw your belly away from the shape of that beach ball. Great, once you land, your hands are directly underneath your elbows. Pull your yoga mat backwards. See if you can, as you press your pelvis down into the floor, see if you can reach your sternum forward then up. Reach your chest forward but not your chin. And as you exhale, release it down. Pulling backwards on your yoga mat, get that traction. Inhale, coil the spine up. Good. Exhale, release it down. One more baby cobra, or if you want upward facing dog, if you're taking upward facing dog, make sure the shoulders are away from 
the ears, the triceps roll back, the eyes of the biceps try to spin forward, and you try to project your chest forward through the gates of your arms at the same time elongating to your tailbone. As you exhale, take your hips up and back into that downward facing dog. Separate your feet out as wide as your yoga mat. Walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Take as many steps as you can. I always notice what needs to be cleaned on my yoga mat when I do this. Great, and then inhale, bend your knees. Take your toes out to 45 degree angle. Bend your knees, lift your chest, drop down into a squat. Left arm out to the left, right arm opens up to the sky, opening up across your chest. Take a few breaths. Good, bring it back to center. Right arm out to the right. Inhale, the left arm up to the sky. So we have a side that's a little bit tighter. So just be kind and compassionate. Give that side a little extra love instead of a little of extra scolding. Good, slowly release it down. Plant your hands on the floor. As you inhale, press into the soles of your feet, lift the sides of your hips up. And then heel toe your feet so that they are um, hips distance apart. Good. Fingertips on the floor or fingertips to your shins. As you inhale, reach your chest forward, but not your chin. How does that happen? Explore that from within, elongate through the sides of the waist. Exhale, release it back down. One more time for practice. Reach your chest forward, but not your chin. Extend that length all the way through the sides of the waist. As you exhale, let your spine cascade back down. Press into the four corners of your feet. As you inhale, circle your arms, reach all the way up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your hips. Yeah, so you have your hands on your hips, and you're gently encouraging those frontal hip points to lift up. And as that happens, you start to feel that engagement, mula bandha, to the low belly, right? So that's how we hold our pelvis and our rib cage, our whole lumbopelvic area in space. Now take your arms straight out to the sides, and as you hold onto that mula bandha, can you retract your shoulder blades and kind of take, as you, um, Exhale, inhale, and as you exhale, can you protract them while you maintain the stability of your pelvis? So it's kind of like that swimming motion. Good, and then when your arms are out to the side, flip your palms up towards the ceiling, keep sending your tailbone straight down, your, your inner thighs back. Inhale, circle your arms up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, keep your tailbone heavy, keep, the, keep that mula bandha turned on, bend your elbows out to the sides like a cactus and then start to lift your sternum up and be aware if those front ribs start to puff out, lift through your sternum, drill your elbows down and curl over your shoulder blades. Good, inhale your arms back up to the sky and as you exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Take a step to the front of your yoga mat. Take a moment to invite that breath down through the crown of your head, and as you exhale, send your roots down into the earth. So let's take three rounds of a pana vayu, grounding ourselves. On your next inhale breath, Surya Namaskar A, inhale, circle the arms, reach up towards the sky. Good, exhale, hinge and fold that breath all the way out. As you inhale, reach your chest forward, but not your chin, elongate through the sides. As you exhale, step back into a plank pose, pause there. Inhale, shift your shoulders forward. As you exhale, lower halfway down or all the way down, you can use that super slow motion. Inhale, baby cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Try to press back through your heels, lift up all 10 of your toes away from the floor, glance back at your heels and make sure you can't see them. So swivel your heels out towards the outsides of your mat a little bit if you actually can see them. At the end of your next breath, bend your knees, look forward, step walk or jump to the top of your mat. As you inhale, lengthen forward your chest but not your chin. Exhale, fold back in. Inhale, circle your arms, reach up to the sky. Exhale, hands come together in front of your heart. 
Round two, just flow with your own breath. I think you guys all know Surya Namaskar A. If not, you can just flow along. Close your eyes and really be present here and now in this experience of moving your body through sun salutations. Come into that downward facing dog. Pause for a few breaths. Every time we come into downward facing dog, it's like an opportunity to look within, to check in, to see what's up. Relaxing any places that feel tension, generally the upper inner shoulder, so encapsulate your shoulder blades on the sides of the body. And then keep that encapsulation as you bend your knees, look forward, step up or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale for length, but not your chin. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, circle and rise. Exhale, hands to your heart, and flow through one more round right up into downward facing dog. Closing your eyes. Finding that inner presence. When you find your way back to downward facing dog, take the temperature. Where's your attention? What are the thought streams you tend to be swimming in? Can you keep changing the channel so that you're back to the channel of life force, prana, breath, experiencing that in your practice? Inhale your right leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, slowly shift forward, curl your knee in towards your chest, push the floor away, and step your foot between your hands. Bend your back knee a lot, and take your arms straight out to the side as you rise into crescent pose. Yeah? So your back knee is bent directly underneath your, um, back, uh, underneath your pelvis. Your arms are straight out to the side, your, your torso is upright. Yeah, and now you're gonna start doing that same movement with your shoulder blades. So, as you inhale, reach your chest forward, retract your shoulder blades. And as you exhale, suction your chest backwards and let your shoulder blades protract a little bit. Just do that three times. So you're exploring, moving at your thoracic spine. Good, and then find the middle of those two extremes. Flip your palms up, and as you inhale, take your arms straight up to the sky. And then keeping your pelvis, those frontal hip points lifted up, mula bandha turned on, start to straighten that back leg any amount. Take an inhale, reach up through your fingertips a little bit more. And as you exhale, lean your torso forward, swoop your arms back behind you. So you're just pivoting at your hip here. Inhale, rise back up to a crescent pose, fingertips to the sky. Yes, exhale, fold it forward over your front leg again. Keep pinning that right hip in so that your right knee is tracking over the second and third time. Toe. One more time. Inhale. Take it all the way up to your crescent pose. Really reach those fingertips. And as you exhale, turn the outer edge of your back foot down, coming into warrior two. Just take a moment to adjust your feet so you have heel to arch position. Descend a little bit lower. Press into the outer edge of your back foot. Reach through your fingertips. And as you inhale, start to straighten that front leg. Take the arms up to the sky. As you exhale, return to warrior two. I like everything in three. So inhale, straighten that front leg, press into the mound of your big toe. Exhale, return to warrior two. Last time, inhale, take it up. Good, and then as you exhale, start to make your transition into trikonasana. So deepen the crease of your right hip, move your pelvis backwards, reach out and stretch through the right side of your waist, and then bring your hand down to, you have a block, so you can place the block to the outer edge of your right foot left arm up to the sky. Keep driving your pelvis towards the back of the room as you drive the crown of your head towards the front of the room. And then turn your left hand to face behind you, drop your hand behind your lower back, maybe find your hip crease, and see if you can roll your left shoulder on top of your right shoulder. And this 
this might be great, or if you want to serve the platter, you can serve the platter with your right hand, reach it out in front of you. Good. If you're serving the platter, take your right hand back down. Unravel your left arm from behind your back and reach it up and over your ear. So now you're elongating through that left side of your body. Keep pressing into the mound of your right big toe so that your right leg keeps becoming longer. Good, and then re-bend your right knee and rise up to warrior two. Good. As you inhale, start to straighten your front leg. Pivot so that your heel lifts up and as you exhale, sit down into skandasana towards the left. Inhale, straighten it up, reach the arms to the sky. Exhale, warrior two. Good. Drop your left hand to the back of your thigh. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And as you exhale, cartwheel your hands down and step your right foot back to meet your left. Take it through a vinyasa if you like. When you come back to downward facing dog, feel the ground underneath you. Remember this practice is about grounding. Being present on this earth, being present with what's happening. Inhale your left leg straight back behind you, pin your right hip in. As you exhale, slowly start to shift forward, knee to chest, and step your foot between your hands. Good. You're gonna stay on the ball of your back foot, put a generous bend in your back knee, upright your torso, take your arms straight out to the sides. Good, so you start to do that same like wave, like almost swimming motion through your thoracic spine. Inhaling, retracting the shoulder blades, exhaling, suctioning your chest backwards. And this can just be natural. Do it three times. And then find that center. Revolve your palms to face up. Inhale, take your arms up to the sky. Press your back leg too straight as you keep curling those frontal hip points up. Hook your left thumb on top of your right thumb and extend the sides of your waist longer. Imagine you could be so long from the bottom part of your pelvis all the way up through your fingertips. Good, and then release, take an inhale, and as you exhale, fold forward, sweep your arms back behind you. Inhale, press into the heel, rise back up. Keep that mula bandha turned on. Exhale, fold forward, reach your chest out. Inhale, rise up. And as you exhale, seal the outer edge of your back foot down and come into warrior two. So notice if you're leaning into the future, send your torso back so that it's right above the center of your pelvis. Take a few rounds of breath just to find warrior two. And then as you inhale, start to straighten that front leg, lift the arms up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, re-bend the knee. So that knee is tracking right over the second and third step. Inhale, press into the mound of your left big toe, take your arms up. Exhale, return to warrior two, keep lifting that frontal hip point of your left side up away from your thigh. Inhale, back up, straighten that front leg and then start to allow your pelvis to shift. Lengthen out through the left side and take your hand down to the block on or onto the outside of your left ankle. Spin the, right, the left side of your chest up as if you could put the left side of your chest up into your right fingertip. Good, and then revolve your right hand, bring your hand behind your back, maybe find your hip crease. If you find your hip crease, give yourself a little self-adjustment. Allow, draw that outer right hip back and in. And then if you want to serve the platter, make sure you don't collapse that left hip as you serve the platter. If you serve the platter, bring your left hand back down, take your right arm, take it up and over your ear, go for so much length through the right side of the body. Press into the outer edge of your right foot. Good, and then re-bend your left knee. Make sure your knee is tracking right over your second and third toe and rise back up to warrior two. Think about the base of your pelvis and stack your rib cage right over that base. As you inhale, start to straighten your front leg, arms to the side, pivot onto your left heel. As you exhale, sit down into skandasana. As you inhale, lift it up again. Exhale, warrior two. Flip your left palm, inhale, reverse. Exhale, cartwheel it down. And take 
it through a vinyasa or straight to dog wherever your breath inspires you joyfully to go. So once you find your way back to downward facing dog, reestablish your roots. At the end of your next breath, bend your knees, look forward, step walk or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, lengthen your chest, but not your chin. Exhale, hold it in. And then bend your knees, circle your arms, Utkatasana chair pose. Take an inhale here, lengthen your sitting bones away from your fingertips. Draw in all four sides of your torso. As you exhale, swoop your arms back behind you, lift up onto your tippy toes, reach your chest out. Good, drop your heels. Inhale, create length from your sitting bones to your fingertips. Exhale, swoop your arms back, lift up onto your tippy toes. I said three, right? So drop your heels. Inhale, swoop the arms up. Exhale, swoop it back, lift up onto your tippy toes. Good, now take your arms out to the sides. You're still up on your tippy toes. Turn your palms to face up and see if you can stand all the way up on your tippy toes as you lift your arms up to the sky. So it's like you're a needle. Spin your inner thighs back behind you. I know this is really challenging. It's really challenging for me. Soften your shoulders, soften your gaze. Good, drop your heels down, circle your arms, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold, straighten the legs. Inhale, heart lifts, chin does not. Exhale through a vinyasa. You can always skip it, you guys know that. Take a moment in downward facing dog to really feel into your foundation, to really be present with the earth underneath you. Good, inhale your right leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, shift forward, curl your knee in towards your chest, and step your foot between your hands. Place a generous bend in your back knee. Lift up into an upright torso position. Take your arms straight out to the side. So just one time this time. Inhale, retract your shoulder blades, reach your chest forward. Exhale, protract your shoulder blades, suction your chest backwards but then wrap your left arm underneath your right arm, coming into Garudasana Eagle Arms. You could always just give yourself a hug again. Good, float your elbows up as you inhale. And as you exhale, move your forearms away from your face. Since this is a difficult transition, we're gonna step that left leg all the way up into Eagle Pose, so that left leg is gonna cross over the right. So think about it, use your breath, don't tense up. Make your transition into eagle pose, and you may not double cross. You may just place your kickstand down. Just coming into this posture to change your perspective, and if you are the type of person who wants your eagle to land on a perch, let your elbows land on your knees. And then we're gonna let that eagle fly away, so unravel your arms, circle them up towards the ceiling, bring your left knee into your chest, and extend your left foot away from you. Soften your gaze, soften your inner upper shoulders. Good, and then bring your hands together in front of your heart and slowly start to pendulum your left hip, your left heel backwards, coming into warrior three. Hands at your heart, keep scooping the abdominals back. Good, and then slowly start to bend that reach into that right leg, leads that left leg way back behind you, land on the ball of your foot, take your arms up to the sky, and as you exhale, open it up again, warrior two. Good. So take a moment, find your home in warrior two. Take a few breaths, feel the quality of the breath. Good, and then flip your right palm over as you inhale, Reverse your warrior. And as you exhale, cartwheel your hands down. So we're moving into side angle pose again. You can take your hand to the outside of your ankle or a block. Left arm up to the sky. And then this time you're gonna take a half bind in side angle. So take your left arm around behind your back. Maybe find your hip crease, roll your left shoulder on top of your right. 
Now some of you guys can go for that full bind, taking your right arm through and catching a hold of your left wrist. Don't force that, you guys. If you're like, that's making you bend all the way down, don't do that. Just do the half bind and just keep working on rolling that left shoulder on top. Great, so whatever variation you have, start to unravel it. Take your left arm back up towards the sky. Inhale, back up into warrior two. Exhale, imagine sending energy out through your fingertips. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Pivot onto the heel of your right foot. Exhale, skandhasana towards the back of your mat. Inhale, take it up again. Exhale, warrior two. Flip your right palm over, inhale, reverse the warrior. And as you exhale, cartwheel it down, grab a hold of your blocks, place them on either side of your right foot, and step your left foot a little bit wider than, you know, you're not on a tightrope, you're basically on a, um, railroad tracks, and you shorten the distance between your right foot and your left foot. So you're coming back into pyramid pose. Take a few rounds of breath here. Keep spinning your inner thighs towards the back wall. Don't lose the emphasis on the proprioception and the soles of your feet, so stay with that. Good, and then hopefully you have your strap handy. Grab your strap, bring your hands to your hips, and rise up with a long spine. Good, so you're gonna take the strap into your left hand. Take your arm all the way up towards the ceiling and bring your left hand down between your shoulder blades. Right arm out to the right. Reach around behind, catch a hold of the strap, and again, press your back ribs backwards to hollow out your front ribs. Inhale, from this hollowed out shape, get longer, drawing your inner thighs backward. And as you exhale, start to elongate your long torso out in front of you, pressing into the mound of your right big toe. Eventually, your pelvis revolves over your thigh, and you let your spine relax down over your right leg. Good. Press into the mound of your right big toe. Rise all the way back up and release your strap. Good. Inhale both arms up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring your hands back down onto the blocks. And then bring your left hand over to the block that's on the right side and bring your right hand to your sacrum. And so you're gently gonna press the right side of your sacrum back. So you give yourself that little adjustment, which is gonna create a pathway for the left side of your rib cage, your left lung to roll down towards the floor as your right lung spins open. And you can stay here, or you can eventually take that right arm up to the sky for Parvita Trikonasana, big twist here. Good, and then if you have that arm revolve slowly, Take your right hand back down, move your left hand to the, your right hand to the right block and your left hand to the left block. Bend into your right knee and you can take your blocks with you if you want to, floating up into a standing split, which is some of you guys are going to want to practice a little bit of handstand here. So if that's you, go for it. If you just want to practice balancing and standing split or flexibility, keep thinking about spinning that left inner thigh back. Good, and then start to bend your right knee. Reach your left leg way back behind you. Move your blocks aside. Left hand down, right arm so straight out to the right, and then start to revolve your torso. An option here to transition into Vashi Stasana. You can stay in the twist, or you can take it to Vashi. If you're taking it to Vashi, any variation that you like. Eventually find your way back to downward facing dog. Any transitions that you like. Okay, second side, inhale your left leg straight back behind you. As you exhale, shift forward, knee to chest, push the floor away, and step your foot between your hands. Good, place that generous bend in your back knee. Imagine you are hugging the skinniest little pencil line. Upright your torso, take your arms out to the sides. Just one wave through your thoracic spine. 
Inhale, chest forward, shoulder blades retract. Exhale, right arm wraps underneath the left arm. Either give yourself a hug or coming into those guards, asana arms. Inhale, lift your elbows, straighten through your back knee. Exhale, move your forearms away from your face. And as you do, suction your heart to the back to where your shoulder blades are. Now think about that transition. You're gonna slowly step your right leg up and over your left, coming into Gardasana Eagle Pose. Keep hugging that outer right hip crease back and in. If you wanna find your perch, find your perch. Let this be an opportunity to change your perspective so you can see the bigger picture. And then let's all let our eagles fly away. So unravel your arms, bring your knee into your chest, take your arms to the ceiling, and take your right leg straight out in front of you. Imagine you could press energy out through your right heel. Hands to your heart. Slowly pendulum your right leg backwards, coming through warrior three. And then slowly start to bend your left knee, reach your right leg way back behind you. Once you land, bring your fingertips down. Step your right foot in about a third of the way. Grab your blocks if you need them. And just pause here in pyramid pose. So the feet are on those railroad tracks. You're spinning both inner thighs towards the back wall. So make sure you're not just hanging out here. I'm finding myself just hanging out here. Put a little more action into it. Pull the blocks backwards, extend your sternum a little bit more, spin both inner thighs. Wake up everything in your body. Don't allow your focus or your awareness to become dull. Good, and then grab your strap. Bring your hands to your hips, press into the mound of your left big toe, and rise up with a long spine. And then make sure that your stance, you can put both feet all the way down, so you might shorten it a little bit. Move the strap into your right hand. Take your right arm up to the ceiling. Bend your right elbow so that you're placing your hand kind of between your shoulder blades. Reach your left arm up to the left. So we're already thinking about those rib cage not splaying. Take your left hand behind your back. Find the strap and then press your back ribs backwards. Really hollow out those front ribs. Inhale, lift and get long through the central channel of your body. And as you exhale, long spine as you fold forward. Keep that front leg straight. Make sure you're not hyperextending the left knee. So if you are, put a gentle bend in your left knee. Keep pressing into the mound of your left big toe so you don't collapse into your outer left ankle. Keep breathing. Good. And then inhale. Rise up. Unravel your arms. Move your strap aside. Good, and then fold forward again. Take your hands to the blocks and then move your right hand to the block that's on the left side. And bring your hand to your sacrum and gently encourage the left side of your sacrum to move back. And notice how that frees up that pathway for the right lung to turn down towards the floor. The left lung opens up and eventually, maybe you take that left arm up, but you use everything to get more extension. Use your shoulder blades to open up your chest. And breathe. You guys are beautiful. Good. Slowly revolve it down. Move your left hand onto the left block, your right hand onto the right block. Bend into your left knee. Take your blocks with you if you need them and float it up into a standing split. Make sure that you can try to lift your pelvis up off of your left thigh. Can you create space there? And then slowly start to bend into your left knee. Reach your right leg way back behind you. Land on the ball of your foot. Inhale your arms all the way up to the sky. Seal the outer edge of your right foot down. And coming into side angle pose here. So extend it out. Bring your left hand down to the left block. Right arm up to the sky. And then turn your palm so that you face behind you. Catch a hold of the outside of your 
right hip. And if you want that double bind, wrap underneath. And roll that right shoulder on top of the left. And then take the right arm straight back up to the sky. Inhale, rise back to warrior two. Exhale, shoot the energy out to your fingertips. As you inhale, straighten your front leg, rise onto the heel. Exhale, skandasana. Inhale, up and over. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Exhale, cartwheel it down. Pivot to the ball of your back foot. Move your blocks aside. And then take your right hand down, left arm straight out to the left, and slowly start to revolve your spine open. And then again, you have that option to stay here or to take it to Vashisthasana. It's an opportunity to be here with your breath. Any variation? Eventually find your way back to downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, shift forward into a plank. Lower down onto your forearms. Interlace your hands and start to walk your toes in again for dolphin pose. So as you come into dolphin pose, press down into your forearms. Wrap your, your triceps back. Maybe try lifting one leg up and kind of pitch forward onto your tippy toes of your standing leg. And then do that on the other side. Good, walk your toes back. Back into a plank pose. Draw the elbows back, extend the sternum forward, lengthen the tailbone and then melt your legs down, coming back into Sphinx Pose. So press your pelvis down, level your chin. Imagine your shoulder blades were like two little hands pressing into the front of your body. And as you exhale, release it all the way down. Okay, so you guys have an option to take Shalambhasana again, which we took in the beginning, or we've done a lot of shoulder openings. So you also have the option to take Dhanurasana. So if you're taking down your if you're taking Shalambhasana, same thing. You can interlace your hands behind your back or use your strap. It's that back bend. If you're taking down your asana, you'll bend your knees. You'll catch a hold of your ankles or the tops of your feet. And then notice your knees are wanting to splay wide apart from each other. No. Bring your knees in as close together as you can and flex your feet a lot. That helps. Once you flex your feet, notice did your hip creases lift away from the floor. Press your hip creases down into the floor. Press your pubic bone down. And then as you start to press your shin bones back, it lifts your chest up away from the floor. Lift your thigh bones away from the floor. Keep breathing. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, release it down. Make a pillow for your face and turn your head to one side. Take some deep breaths. That back bend can be pretty stimulating, so we might feel that there's a little bit more energy to our breath. Let's do it one more time. Either variation, whether you're taking Shalambhasana again or Dhanurasana. I'll um, teach Dhanurasana again since it's a little bit more challenging. Bend your knees, press your pelvis down. Make sure your knees are in line with your sitting bones so they're not splaying out. Reach around, catch your ankles or the tops of your feet. And with your pubic bone really pressing down, imprinting itself into your yoga mat, start to straighten, start to press your shins backwards, lift the thigh bone up, and again, can you press your sternum forward without scrunching the back of your neck? Take one more breath, and then relax it down, make a pillow for your face, and turn your head to the opposite. Take some big deep breaths and just notice the pathway. Good. And then roll it over onto your back. Hug your knees in towards your chest. Take a few 
breaths here. Feel your back spreading out. Good, and then drop the left sole of your foot down to the mat. Cross your right ankle over. If you want a little more, cross your right thigh bone over. Cross your right ankle over, bring your left knee into your chest. If you have your thigh bone crossed over, bring both knees in to the midline of your chest and then catch the outsides of your shins and pull your ankles apart from one another. And then whichever variation you have, let it go. Switch to the other side, so the sole of the left foot down, either the ankle or the knee crosses over. And you find your hip opener. Good. And then release whatever it is that you have. Find your block again. Take your block this skinny way. Place the block between your knees. Your legs are in tabletop. Your arms are extended out to the sides. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, slowly let your knees drop down towards the left-hand side. Keep squeezing the block. So this keeps the hips aligned. The knees are stacked. The hips are stacked. If your knees don't make it all the way to the floor, use your other block to create a shelf. And then just relax and rest and allow your body to accept the shape. Good, squeeze your knees into your block, inhale, bring it back up to the top. And as you exhale, observe the entire journey. Keep squeezing the block. Feel when your left hip stacks on top of your right hip. Feel when your knees descend. And then gaze over your left arm. Allow your body to soften into the shape. the block and then catch the outer edges of your ankles or your feet for happy baby. If you want something a little bit more you can take a plow but if you're taking a plow make sure you don't look to the left and to the right. And then find your way to the end of your practice to Shavasana so your way home. And so as you come into that final resting posture, as you set yourself up to be really comfortable over the next five minutes or so, to really let yourself go. This is the break, the break you all wanted, here it is. And this is your opportunity to rest and to digest, to recharge, to regenerate, to restore, so that you can use whatever it is that you've been feeling towards action. But right now, it's not about action. Right now, it's about rest. So let your body go. Let your breath go. Retreat to that inner sanctuary. And imagine that your only job for the next few minutes is to just tend the garden of that beautiful inner sanctuary. To make sure that everything has enough nourishment. To become abundant. Keep letting go deeper and deeper into that sanctuary space.
from the beautiful sanctuary, visualize the bright light like a sun inside of you, right at your solar plexus that is helping to um, help that inner sanctuary thrive and grow. And that light, that fire within you is also helping you to transform, to transform whatever it is you're feeling into actions, into purpose, into meaning, into community, into connection. So take one more moment and unite that inner fire with that space of regeneration, that space of retreat. So we get to take our breaks, but then we get to take what we gain from our break and move it out into the world. So yoga means unity, and we as a part of this world, participants in this world, unite with the causes that move us and motivate us. So on your next inhale breath, stretch your arms back behind you, stretch your legs out in front of you. Imagine you could energize and invigorate and enliven every single cell and every single molecule. Alive with purpose, alive with energy. Hug your knees in towards your chest. It's like a symbol of being able to contain our energy, being able to pull it back in when we need to. And then roll over onto your side and gently press yourself into a seated position. And as you come to that seated position, bring your hands together in front of your heart, but let's come back to the apana vayu, breathing in through the crown of the head and breathing out through the sitting bones, sending that beam of light energy down into the earth. So imagine you are a conduit for this beautiful, magnificent white light to come down. You are a conduit for evolution, for all of humanity. So take a moment and just accept that mission. We're all here to find our purpose and to keep Keep discovering how it shifts and changes and what, we, what our call to action is. And as you start to think about the big picture, the stars in the sky, the comets, the meteors, the whales, the dolphins, all of the things that are, you know, outside of our normal awareness, just take a moment to find gratitude for this mysterious, crazy universe that we live in. Take a moment to feel gratitude for being an integral part of that. Slowly allow your eyes to open. Namaste.